This is severe weather from KSL. Dude, it's coming down. That circulation building. We have a, a tornado. tornado. Dude, that is a freaking oh tornado. Oh my god. It came fast and furious. A tornado whips through Weber County, destroying homes, buildings, and ripping trees right out of the ground. Good morning to you on this Friday with Andrew Wittenberg and Lori Pritchard. We do have team coverage this morning. Haley Smith tracking the damage left behind in Washington Terrace. Cheryl Park is in the breaking news center this morning. But we're going to begin with Grant Wayman with the impact today's weather will have on your weekend. Wow, what a weather story, guys. It all started with strong storms that hit southern in Utah yesterday with flooding and then it was that severe weather threat with the strong thunderstorms the tornadoes that touched down as well along with that we had very strong wind gusts and rain amounts anywhere from one to two inches in a lot of spots with that alone is a big weather story of course we had a lot more to add to that phase two of that storm that's today and that's going to bring some widespread rain to the area now here's the good news we are not looking at a severe weather threat today we are not looking at uh, the strong thunderstorms with the lightning threat or the strong wind threat today it's going to be more of a widespread rain and colder temperatures. Radar right now is going to show it to you. Uh, just to the west of us over the Great Salt Lake is where we're seeing most of this rain right now. Parts of the I-15 up to the north of Salt Lake were starting to fill in. By the way, you're looking at some of the storm damage there in the other box there. Northern Utah right now, that heavier rain, it's starting to move over that I-15 corridor north of Brigham City. You're going to find some of the heavier rain. If you're commuting from Ogden to the south, a little better news, at least for the short term. It's, the rain isn't as heavy here. We're seeing a little bit of rain in Layton right now. I've been seeing some showers in Utah County, but Salt Lake County, for the most part, it's dry. There is the threat of snow today as the temperatures drop. How about this? First winter advisory of the season. We're talking about 5 to 10 inches of snow uh, through the day today, beginning a little later this morning and going all the way into the evening hours and overnight hours. 50 now, that's pretty much the high of the day. Down south, they get the clearing. 70, it's going to be much cooler in St. George. After all this wild weather, we're talking about a warm-up next week. Go figure. I'll talk about how much warmer. That's straight ahead. Good morning. Weather, of course, the big story in traffic as well. Take a look at this. This is the ramp from Highway 89 to southbound 15 in North Salt Lake. It's not there. It's covered by this lake. So traffic on Highway 89. Everybody lives in North Salt Lake Woods Cross that usually would slide onto I-15 here. You can't do it. They'll put you straight onto Beck Street. So either get on at the Woods Cross exit or you got to take Beck Street all the way into Salt Lake. Then we've also got this problem that's starting to cause a little bit of delay at the Highland Drive and Fort Union intersection over on the east side of the Salt Lake Valley. Traffic lights flashing red and then very wet roads through Utah County coming up to Point of the Mountain. Andy, thank you for that update. 602 now on this Friday. Tens of thousands without power this morning as they clean up the aftermath. Severe weather left behind, which means some students will be out of school this morning. Sheriff Park is in the breaking news center monitoring those school closing. Yeah, this really impacts those students in the Washington Terrace area. So let's get a list of those schools out for you this morning. Schools close today, including Bonneville High School, T.H. Bell Junior High, Roosevelt Elementary, and Washington Terrace Elementary. Again, a lot of cleanup going on in this area. They have power outages up there, so that is why these schools are being closed today. Now, let's talk about those power outages. At least, let's, in terms of Provo City, they got all their power back on around 1.30 this morning, according to the power company. But in Weber and Davis County, that's where our trouble is this morning. In Weber County, 33 customers, uh, 3,300 customers are without power with restoration times, according to Rocky Mountain Power, still unknown at this hour. In Davis County, 6,400 Rocky Mountain Power customers still without power restoration time unknown though I can tell you crews have been out all night trying to get those lines repaired and get the power back up and going I'll keep an eye out we're looking at all of the viewer video that's been coming into our newsroom overnight we're gonna have several videos to show you throughout our hour so we'll be back in just a few minutes to talk about those incredible videos and, and what's going on with cleanup this morning all right sure thank you from the breaking news center with much to talk about this morning meantime one of the hardest hit areas northern Utah where thousands are are still without power right now. And in Washington Terrace in Weber County, a line of homes damaged by that storm. Haley Smith is live in Washington Terrace for us now this morning with a look at that destruction left behind. Good morning to you, Haley. Good morning, Andrew and Laura. Yes, and I'm told by the Sheriff's Department there are about 12 uninhabitable homes in this area, two of which were directly impacted by the tornado. Guys, get in here and take a look. We've got swing sets tipped over. We've got this entire uh, 
outdoor structure just ripped from the ground. I mean, it is amazing the destruction that this tornado did. Walk with me here. We've got broken glass in almost all of the windows here at this house. Oh, look, we've got debris still on the sidewalks in the streets. This whole part of the neighborhood is actually closed down. And then if we can get a little closer, I'm not sure uh, our capabilities here on our extensions, but we've got this house here on the corner where the roof was ripped off, damaged cars down the street. We've also got downed power poles that I'm told hopefully crews will be able to get out here fairly quickly to get the power back on in this area. But a lot of damage, we've got trees and Washington Terrace wasn't the only area that was hit hard, although it was the only area with the tornado in northern Utah. Also in Layton, there was severe wind and destruction. Just in my neighborhood alone, we had massive trees that were just completely toppled over. My neighbor's trampoline even got so much air from a wind gust, it cleared our fence and smashed into the side of our house. And so a lot of people left to pick up the pieces this morning and clean up, especially these two homes here in Washington Terrace. The Sheriff's Department saying that the community is really going to need to come together today, especially with the rain we're still seeing, to really get things cleaned up and help each other out. I mean, this is not something you see from your average storm here in Utah. A lot of people just very in shock that a tornado touched down here. Of course, we'll be out here all morning continuing the team coverage. Again, schools, four schools in this area are currently um, out of class for today as power is out in this area. Andrew and Lori. Oh man, you do not see damage like that often from a tornado here in the state of Utah. Haley Smith, they're live in Washington Terrace, one of the hardest hit areas today. Let's go to Duchesne County now where two and a half inches of rain in just 24 hours left parts of Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. You can see the floodwaters right here. Yeah, take a look at this from torrential rainfall. It overwhelmed, you see a drainage ditch in one neighborhood, sending water everywhere. Neighbors banding together to get sandbags down as hundreds of volunteers were scrambling to secure that area while oil companies brought heavy duty pumps and trucks to sunk up all of that water. I remember storms, but this is probably the biggest one. The mayor says that drainage ditch has become a concern for some time. In fact, he just met with the Utah Department of Transportation about it the day before. They plan to add a larger drainage pipe next year. Meantime, homeowners potentially are bracing for more rain there today. And let's go to Vernal now. Check out this mess at Dinosaur National Monument. Park officials caught this flood on video as it joined with the Green River. Heavy rain closed off all of the unpaved roads of the park for several hours. And people in Carbon and Duchesne counties are also cleaning up this morning. These images also coming from Vernal. Price was one of the first towns to get hit by floodwaters. That was yesterday morning. We showed you some pictures then. It left roads completely underwater. Things only just got worse throughout the day. People laid out sandbags to try to control that rain runoff. And KSL has been following these storms statewide, and we will bring you the very latest information on the new developments throughout the day, including when the power will be restored in the multiple communities that have been affected. We will keep our eyes on that, obviously, but we want to update you on breaking news in Salt Lake City from overnight. A deadly auto pedestrian accident involving a unified police officer. As officials say, it was raining pretty hard when a man in his 30s wearing dark clothing crossed the street, not in a crosswalk. That's when a unified police officer driving eastbound on 1300 South struck him, throwing him into the westbound lane where another car then hit him. He was pronounced dead at the scene. The roads were closed for about three hours overnight there in Salt Lake. Police are investigating this morning. New today, Salt Lake City Police have made an arrest in the weekend killing of an 18-year-old. Police say 20-year-old Landon Johnson was booked into the Salt Lake County Jail in connection with the murder of Eric Padilla on Saturday. Investigators believe Padilla was killed while visiting a friend at the Sky Harbor Apartments. Officials say they do, they do not believe Padilla was the intended target. Developing now, a child in serious condition this morning after a car accident in Providence up in the Cache Valley. You HP says a woman who was in the car is also in serious condition. Sergeant Jason Kendrick says their car was T-boned at an intersection at 1700 South. The driver of the truck who hit them has minor injuries as well. We'll be sure to bring you the latest as soon as we learn more on that accident. But I want to go back to Grant Wayman now coming up at 609 with more on this mm. weather happening right now. All that severe weather. We showed you all the damage, Andrew. Folks should know this. This is really the, the, the better news that I got to give you this morning. That phase of the storm is over. We, even though we're expecting more rain, 
rain today. We are not expecting the strong thunderstorms. We're not expecting those strong wind gusts and the kind of damage that they produced yesterday. Today, it's going to be more of a widespread rain, cooler temperatures as that snow level drops. And right now, the I-15 quarter still seeing some showers. It's a bit heavier as you head north of Ogden. The heavier stuff is actually still to the west of town should be sweeping through the Wasatch Front later this morning into the afternoon, and we'll expect cold temperatures to go along with it. Wow, this is gonna feel more like, I'm not kidding you here, like a late November kind of day. How about that with 40s and rain showers for a good portion of the day, way below that average. Rain gear, you're gonna need that, but you're gonna wanna bundle up underneath that, a sweater or something like that, and then put the raincoat on top. Believe it or not, things looking better for the weekend Tell you when we hit 70 again. That's straight ahead. Caught in a tornado, these young cadets definitely have quite the story to tell this morning after severe weather hit out of nowhere. How they managed to get away from the funnel cloud and how it brought them even closer. And here's another look at the school closings this morning. Due to severe weather, Bonneville High School, T.H. Bell Junior High School, Roosevelt Elementary School, and Washington Terrace Elementary School. Out of school today, we'll be right back.